Professor, there are lots of reports by the UN that show that significant progress has been made in attaining the Millennium Development Goals, especially in uh, reducing poverty. But there are also reports from reputable organizations that show that the number of poor people in Africa and uh, South Asia hasn't reduced despite the millions of shillings pumped into this cause. What do you think is the problem? I think that there is poverty reduction in Africa and in South Asia when you measure the uh, proportion of the population in poverty. Since the population is increasing in total numbers, uh, that partly offsets the decline of the share of the population. There is progress, it's just not been fast enough. Okay, so what do you think should be done to accelerate the attainment of these MDGs by 2015? My general theory about the MDGs is that we need targeted public investments. Uh, in other words, uh, the private sector can do uh, so much, it, it can do a lot, but without uh, government uh, focusing on education, on health care, uh, on uh, breaking the poverty trap in agriculture, in building infrastructure, it won't be sufficient. You've been a strong advocate of the notion that uh, the massive increase of foreign aid in Africa is the surest way of getting this continent out of the poverty trap. But there are political scholars here who disagree with your view. They say that development and poverty reduction in Africa must be achieved by local initiatives. What do you say to that? Well, I agree with that. It's not a contradiction. Uh, local initiative is essential. But local initiative backed by a little bit of money uh, is even better. Uh, and so it's not that I think that foreigners are going to solve Africa's problems. They're the last ones that are going to solve it. Africa has to solve its own uh, problems. But it, to the extent that we can find some help, all the better uh, for uh, poor communities. In 1985, I read that uh, Bolivia was going experiencing a hyperinflation. And you were the economic uh, advisor to the country then. Right. You came up with some extensive plans that drastically reduced the inflation and turned around the economy. Now, Uganda is also going through an inflation. What interventions would you suggest for this country? First, uh, don't ever let the problem get to the situation of Bolivia because Uganda has inflation of, say, 15 to 20 percent per year. Bolivia then had 24,000 percent inflation. So they had something that was completely uh, extraordinary. It's the kind of collapse, by the way, that Zimbabwe uh, has gone through uh, because Zimbabwe also had a hyperinflation. Uganda has high inflation, but fortunately nothing like that. The problem right now is that uh, all parts of the world are suffering from global shocks of high food prices, which is a huge part of the Ugandan uh, uh, purchasing uh, uh, basket, uh, and also high uh, oil prices. And so everybody suffers from that. Now, what can Uganda do about that? One is focus on agriculture, uh, help get food prices down, achieve uh, food self-sufficiency through better uh, yields in agriculture. This is that green revolution that I think is very, very important. Second, Uganda is a landlocked country we know suffers from high transport costs. This is a, a real barrier uh, for this country. That's why I've always advocated uh, focusing on transport to the ports uh, because Uganda needs those lifelines, whether it's uh, good highways uh, and a renovated rail system. Both of those together, plus fiber optics and internet connectivity, I think would be the key for this country to achieve more international competitiveness by 